This third valley of the Kathopanishad commences with a mantra which is often quoted in Vedantic lectures. <clears throat> and the third valley also has some very interesting way of presenting this Atma Tattva, which is very often quoted by various people. So there we have the metaphor of Atmanam Ratinam Vidhi. Shariram Vathamevatu Buddhim to Sarathim Vidhi and so on. So he just says this Atma can be conceived of and so on. Manas Pragrahamevacha. So it's a very important usage there. If you are driving a chariot, so particularly if you have had any experience in going in bullock cart. This bullock cart is what chariot, I hope you don't know. So the bullock cart I have gone. So there, this uh, the rope see, is extremely important. See, he will put the rope this side, the bullock will turn. He will put the rope this side, it will turn. So this is something which is very important. Similarly, here it is said, see, manaf pragraha meva cha. See, so if the sharira is a chariot, so then, it is essentially the mind which controls the motion of this chariot. See, that is how this metaphor goes. Atmanam ratinam vidhi, sariram ratanevatu buddhim tu sarathim vidhi, manaf pragraha meva cha, and so on. That we will come to a little later. It actually commences, this is the third mantra in the third valley. The first two mantras go like this. Ratam vibantau sukrutasya loke, bham pravishtau parame parardhe. Chaya tapo brahmavido vadanti panchagnayo e chatrina chiketa yasse suriyana maksharam brahmayat param abhayanti tirishatam param achiketam shake mahi. I suppose we can see these two mantras today. And for these two mantras, so Ramaraja had dedicated two verses. Okay. So we will start with. <coughs> Verse 25, we repeat. Dehe smin paramam nabhaha. Dehe smin paramam nabhaha. Dehe smin paramam nabhaha. Parapadam buddhim pravishyasthitau. Parapadam buddhim pravishyasthitau. Parapadam buddhim pravishyasthitau. Gudhau dvau purushau paras paraparau. Gudhau dvau purushau paras paraparau. Gudhau dvau purushau paras paraparau. Chaya prakasha vive. Chaya prakasha vive. Chaya prakasha vive. Ekastatra phalam kritasya madhuram. Ekastatra phalam kritasya madhuram. Ekastatra phalam kritasya madhuram. Bhunte paraf pasyati. Bhunte paraf pasyati. Bhunte paraf pasyati. Brahmajna iti sambhanam tikritinaha. Brahmajna iti sambhanam tikritinaha. Brahmajna iti sambhanam tikritinaha. Panchagnayo pisputam. Panchagnayo pisputam. Panchagnayo pisputam. So the Kriyapada here is. Sambhananti. See, sambhananti. So, bhanana is basically stating. Okay. Sambhananti. So, means samyak bhananti. So, they clearly state so. That is how the word sambhananti has to be understood. Now, ke sambhananti. So, here there are two words here. One is Brahmajnaha Sambhananti. The other is Kritinaha Sambhananti. 
सो ब्रह्मज्ञा संभ्रणती कृति संभ्रणती अरे हाउ वी हेव टू अंडरस्टैंड सो ब्रह्मज्ञा मीन दो नो ब्रह्म दे स्टेट सो कृति सो कृति जयंती ते सुकृति रस सिद्धा कविश्वरा दिस इज ए इंटरेस्टिंग वर्ड इन सो कृति हेज वेरिय मीनिंग्स कृति मीन पुण्यवान इज वन मीनिंग सो कृति इन जनरल मीन द वन हूज एंगेज इन एक्टिविटी द वन हू एंगेज हिमसेल्फ इन एक्टिविटी इज कृति सो हियर कृति means karmathaha so those who engage in vaidika kriya so they are described by the term kritinaha so those who are engaging so karma nishtaha jnana nishtaha so these are the two categories which he is referring to both of them say so this is what what do they say what do they say? this is what we have to understand बिफोर टेकिंग दिस वर्स एंड इट्स मीनिंग हेज गिवन बाई रामराया इट मे बी यूजफुल टू स्टडी वॉट हेज बीन गिवन बाई भगवत पादा बिकॉज दिस इज समथिंग विच इज ए वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मंत्र एस ए टोल्ड यू ऋतम पिबंत सुकृत से लोके गुहम प्रविष्ट परमे परार्थे छाया तपो ब्रह्म विदो वदी पंचाग्नो ये छत्रिना चिकेता दिस इज द फर्स्ट मंत्र फॉर विच दिस वर्स ट्वेंटी फाइव हेज बीन डेडिकेटेड बै रामराय हाउ डज दि कमेंटरी गो ऋत हियर नॉर्मली वी अंडरस्टैंड बै द वर्ड ऋत टू बी सत्यम द वर्ड टू बीच इफ यू एड a negative particle negation it will become anrutam 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 is asatyam ritam means satya so when both satya and rita are used then you will try to differentiate so what is rita what is satya but as of now we just take it as satyam okay ritam is satyam pibantau is you find a dual pibantau so which means two people are engaging in the activity so this pibantau should be understood as experiencing okay so pibantau should be understood as experiencing which doesn't really mean so drinking the fruit of karma phala so that is how we have to understand so that means karma phala is the meaning that one has to take for this word ritam which has been given how does the word ruta refer to karma phala so this has been nicely brought out by bhagavat pala that is why i wanted to quote the bhashya here so he says so initially i will just read quickly and then i will explain this to you ritam pibantau ityasyah valyah sambandha so initially he is trying to connect the purva valli and the current valli vidya vidye nana viruddha phale ityupanyaste so initially it was stated that vidya phala manyatu avidya phala manyatu so this was stated earlier tan nirnayartha rasa roopa kalpana this is a beautiful metaphor which we will see a little later rasa roopa kalpana kalpana is just this is the way if you explain this may get into the mind so therefore they give this rasa roopa kalpana tatha ata pratipatti saukar pratipatti saukar yami pratipatti hi jnanam the pratipatti saukar yam means in order to facilitate the understanding this kind of a kalpana is used so pratipatti saukar yam so we use no suppose i have heard this phrase uh suppose you go and talk to somebody and the discussion was boring then we use the phrase blade no understand <laughs> so we use the word blade 
Blade means, I mean, uh, if uh, somebody puts a blade, so you will really feel, right? So, in order to explain, so this is this is what is called metaphor. You use a simile, upamana. So then you will easily understand. So that is how it is. So pratipatti saukaryam means in order to communicate something effectively, it is used. So then he says, evancha praptr prapya gantra gantavya vivekartham rasaru pagadvara. So there are uh, detailed descriptions of the Ratha Rupa Kalpana, which we will come to in the next class. So here he is saying, Pratra Prapya Gantra Gantavya. So the one who reaches and the place to be reached. Okay? So that is how we have to understand this. Vivek Artham, in order to make a clear distinction. Ratharu Pakadvara Dvau Atmano Upanyasyete. So, as if there are two Atmas which are present. So, here there are no two Atmas, but as if there are two Atmas, it is being presented to us. Yekaha Tatra Karma Phalam Pibati. So, there he says, Ritam. Satyam Avashyam Bhavitvat Karma Phalam. So how do you understand the phrase? Ritam Satyam. Why is it called Satyam? Avashyam Bhavitvat. So because this is something which is inescapable. See? Avashyam Bhavitvat. I am reminded of an interesting verse which may be useful for you people. See, uh, there is a verse see which will be useful okay <laughs> um ha huh, you repeat avashyam bhavi bhavanam avashyam bhavi bhavanam avashyam bhavi bhavanam pratikaro bhavet yadi pratikaro vyakti pratikaro bhavet yadi pratikaro bhavet yadi Tada dukhair na yujyeran, Tada dukhair na yujyeran, Tada dukhair na yujyeran, Nalarama yudhishthira, Nalarama yudhishthira, Nalarama yudhishthira. It just happens to many of us in various instances. If the outcome of a certain karya which you do with all good intention turns out to be otherwise. So then the people will start blaming you and you will be really, really see, bothered. See, I did with all good intention, they have completely mistaken. So this is a major problem that many of us encounter. So here in this context, this verse will be very, very useful. What it says is, see, when I read this Avashyam Bhavi, this term, this came to my mind. So here it is said, Avashyam Bhavi Bhavanam. So Bhava here refers to an event which is supposed to happen. And here it is said, Avashyam Bhavi Bhavanam. Pratikaro Bhavedhyadi. See, if there were some remedial measure which could have been taken in order to avoid this, then it says, Tada Dukhairna Yujjeran. So then these people need not have undergone trouble. Who? Nala Rama Yudhishthira. He is a Chakravarti, Rama is a Chakravarti, Yudhishthira is a Chakravarti. So they all underwent all kinds of sufferings, right? So Nala Rama Yudhishthira, Tada Dukhaihi Nayudjeran. See, Rama laments. Namad Vidho Nushrita Karmakari. Manye dvitiyosti vasundharayam. Rama says, I don't think there is anybody in this world who can be a greater sinner than me. Namadvidho dushkrita karmakari. Manye dvitiyosti vasundharayam. I mean, he just. Uh, and then Lakshmana comes and tells him, No, 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 Rama. See, 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 don't get 
lost yourself in sorrow okay so be enthusiastic you will find out so lakshmana comes and consoles you so this happens so when uh, i share with this verse i remember distinctly there was an ias officer very high position secretary and so on he came to our house once and uh, he was just sharing some things so uh, this is very difficult my daughter is in trouble son is trouble this way etc then i told him avashyam vai bhavanam pratikaro bhavet iti tada dukhai nayurjya naradam so this is enough for me so this is a great source of consolation for me that is what he said then he went off <laughs> anyway i am saying so this avashyam bhavi means it is going to necessarily happen avashyam bhavi what is avashyam bhavi this karma phala see this karma phala is avashyam bhavi and therefore it is said ritam okay ritam te bantau means essentially those who are experiencing the karma phala okay ritam te bantau so it is a dual usage ritam te bantau in fact we have a very interesting verse hmm. another important verse which will be quoted is ha hmm. ah, na bhuktam kshiyate karma मनुष्य जन्म शास्त्र is uh, because of lot of good deeds and some bad deeds so it is an outcome of that in fact they say shubhai raptnoti devatvam repeat shubhai raptnoti devatvam hmm shubhai raptnoti devatvam ashubhair narakim tanum ashubhair narakim tanum अशुभैर्नारकीं मनुष्यम लभते वशः मनुष्यम लभते वशः मनुष्यम लभते वशः लभते अवशः दैट इज हाउ यू हैव टू स्टडी उभाभ्याम पुण्यपापाभ्याम मनुष्यम लभते अवशः वेदर यू लाइक आर नॉट यू विल गेट अंडरस्टैंड शुभैराप्नोति देवत्वम अशुभैः नारकीं तं So if you do good deeds, so you will get good results. If you do bad things, you will suffer. Okay. And if you have done both, ubhav bhyam punya pa pa bhyam manushyam labhate vasha. So keeping all this in mind, the Bhagavad Gita here writes: "See, ritam satyam avashyam bhavitva karma phalam ritam pibantau." Then he says. एकस्त्र कर्म फल धुवती भुंते पिबती मीन भुंते एक्सपीरियंस ने तर नॉट अदर पर्सन तथा ऑफ द टू वन एक्सपीरियंस एंड द अदर डज नॉट एक्सपीरियंस बट यूसेज इज ऋतम पिबंत सो फॉर दैट देर इज अन्याय विच पीपल use so there are various nyayas in sanskrit right what is thali pula ka nyay so <laughs> nowadays people don't know <laughs> yeah correct so nowadays people may not know because they don't cook they use cooker in those days when you boil in a vessel you will take one rice and then if it is So cooked, then the entire thing is cooked. 
Sali Pulakan Nyaya. This is what they say. Similarly, there are so many Nyayas, hundreds of them are there. So here they use what is called Chhatri Nyaya. Chhatri Nyaya means, huh? <laughs> ah, Chhatri Nyaya. So Chhatri Nyaya is, suppose, there are four fellows who are going. So three may be having umbrella. One fellow may not have. But you will say Chhatri no Gachanti. Chhatri no Gachanti means that Chhatri fellow may also be there. So similarly, even in IIT, you can say bright students are studying there. There may be some other fellow also. No doubt. <laughs> See, that will be there. But generally, I mean, some name comes from. So it is like that. Chhatri Nyayena Buddhi Mantaha Atra Pathanti Nka. So that is not, not necessarily true. <laughs> So that is how it is. Buddhi mantaha pathayanti, that is also not true. <laughs> both, of, both of them are not true. But the majority may be there. So that is how it is. So this is what he is saying here. See, Ritam Vibandhau, for that Bhagavad Pada says, Tathavi, Patra Sambandhat, Patra Sambandhat, Pibantau ityuchete chatrinyayena. What is Sambandhat? How did this fellow, so who is a dullard, who will be described as a bright fellow? Because he has done daily. Sambandhat. So, what is Sambandhat? So, just because of some association, something will come. See, what is Sambandhat? Pibantau ityuchete chatrinyayena. Then he says, Sukrutasya. Here there is a very interesting, very interesting interpretation. What is the mantra says? Ritam Pibantav Sukrutasya Loke. This is the first quarter. Right? Ritam Pibantav Visa. Ritam means Karmathalam Pibantav, experiencing. Sukrutasya. Kasya. Kasya Phala. So there he says, Sukrutasya. What is Sukrutasya? Good deed. Good deed. So bad deed you will not experience. Sukrutasya phalam means, Dushkrutasya phalam. So the Sukrutasya, Sukrutasya phalam anubhavanti na Dushkrutasya phalam. So therefore, See, interestingly, Bhagavad Pada comments this word. He says, Sukrutasya means Swayam Krutasya. Sukrutasya means Swayam Krutasya Karmanaha. What does this mean? Swayam Krutasya Karmanaha. Should one say this? So you are not going to experience the fruit of the other fellow's action. Why should he interpret like this? See, Sukrutasya. Then how do you understand this? Sukrutasya karmanaha. He is saying Swayankrutasya karmanaha. So as I was reading this, of course, when I read for my examination, I did not examine this. So I just went like this. So <laughs> now, today, as I was just reading, so just before one hour, as I was browsing through this, See, just uh, stuck me that only when you do some act consciously, so if you do some act consciously, so then only the outcome will be experienced by you. Abuddhi Purvakam Yat Kritam. Listen, that is how even when some drunkard just keeps shouting at you. So people don't care for. Understand? So some lunatic keeps shouting. So you don't care for. Right? So Buddhi Purvakam Yat Kritam. Any act that you do. Suppose you are asked to cook one day. By chance, it turned out to be tasty. Suppose it is like that. <laughs> See, sometimes that happens. <laughs> See, so there is one relative of mine. 
So I have uh, very close relative. I have eaten many times. Nothing will be tasty. Somehow I mean she will make something. Of course. But one day it turned out to be tasty. So, <laughs> but that is not buddhi purva kankrita. You understand? So something, I mean, they add, something is added. So something comes out well. Right? So then she cannot claim that I am a great cook. You understand? So that is not possible. Buddhi purvakam, I mean, you should be able to add an appropriate proportion and every time it has to come. Then only, I mean, you can claim. So, Swayam Kritam means, Buddhi Purvakam, if you perform an act. Now, this uh, Su normally is used to refer to Shobhanam. Okay? Something. So, here, Acharya interpreter, interprets. <coughs> See? So, Shobhanam Karma or Ashobhanam Karma. So, this Sushtu Kritam is only when it is done. Okay? So, suppose I ask, so uh, you sing Kambodhi, you sing Kalyani. Then, uh, you just sing, it comes me. So, every time I say, I mean, you have to do well. So, then only I think you are knowledge. So, Buddhi Purvakam, it has to come. So, sometimes, I mean, some tune may come somewhere like that. But that cannot be considered. So that is how see Sukrutasya. Sukrutasya means well done. Well done means buddhi purvakam kata. <coughs> so here we have to understand it that way. Sukrutasya Swayam Kritasya Karmanaha. Okay. Ritamiti Purvena Sambandha. Okay. <coughs> Sukrutasya so Phalabhoktaru. Loke, how do we understand the word loke? So loke is asmin sharire. Okay, asmin sharire. How do you understand the word loka to mean sharira? You should say lokyate iti loka. Ah, what is he? You cannot see atma. You only see sharira. Understand? Lokyate means asmin sharire. So it is a very very important fact which is being conveyed by the word loke. See, lokyate iti lokaha. So here, lokaha can mean several things. It can be external word. It can be prajaha. But ultimately, it is only some physical object. Okay. So physical object which gains some existence and which loses its existence. Okay, the sharira is gained at a given point of time and it is lost at a different point of time. And uh, the bhok, see, the bhoktra karma, bhoktra karma means basically the act of experiencing. So the act of experiencing is completely connected with the sharira. Without sharira, there is no bhoktra bhava. Okay, so therefore he says, loke asmin sharire. Ratam pibanto sukrutasya loke Guham pravishtau parame pararthe Guham pravishtau The word guha normally is understood to be cave. Okay. Guha means cave. So cave, it should be understood in a metaphorical sense, something which is uh, so very safely guarded. Okay. Not easily known what is there inside. Even today we don't know. Buddhi. So what is there inside? How is it functioning? We don't know. <laughs> so Guham Pravishtau. So thousands and millions of people are working on how does a neuron function? So what is happening? We don't know. Something happens, we know. Of the experiences are human experiences which we are trying to connect to some physical dopamine puta. You know, have you ever heard dopamine? What is a dopamine? Hormone. Uh, hormone. Hormone that is secreted by... <laughs> so it is secreted in various parts. So some, some people try to give externally dopamine. You hmm. have heard that uh, so that will make you happy and so on. So nothing. So whatever you externally give cannot go inside. See, it can go to sharira at most, it cannot go guha. You understand? So even in science, scientifically, that cannot enter there. Buddhi. So anyway, 
Shakti Guham Pravishta. Here it means Guham. Acharya says Guham, Guhayam, Buddha Pravishta. So Guham, he is saying Guhayam, how? In Dutiya Bhakti, no? Guhayam? Haan, uh, Haptami. Haan. So you can use both? So you can use both, in fact. See, Grihe Praveshaha. See, Griham Pravishtaha, Grihe Pravishtaha. You understand? So, no, no, no. This, basically, this Adhikarana will pick up Dhritiya also. See? So that is how he is interpreting this as Guham Pravishtau, Guhayam Pravishtau, Parame. Parame Guhayam. So you, as it is, you cannot do this. Parame Saptami. So it is an adjective to Guha. And therefore he is saying Guham Pravishtau, Guhayam Pravishtau, Parame. Parame means something which is supreme. Okay. This Parashabda, so you will see in Ramaraya, he uses in both senses. <laughs> see, if you read that, I was just reading this very interesting. I will just quickly come back to this. See, the two lines go like this Dehesmin Paramam Nabhaf Parapadam. Understand? Dehe smin paramam nabhaha. Paramam nabhaha. Nabhaha is space. Akasha. Paramam nabhaha. Supreme space. Supreme space is this space. So, which has to be really, really protected from being attacked by other things. Dehe smin paramam nabhaha. Parapadam. You have two, three meanings for this para word. You have to understand. That is why I just said. So here, parame is used. See? So, paramam nabhaha means see, most important space. Dehesmin paramam nabhaha. See, certain things may happen. You can severe certain portion of your sarira. But in the case of buddhi, nothing much can be done. Okay. There is <laughs> Paramam Nabhaha. So that space buddhi. <coughs> See, then he says Parapadam. Parapadam actually means okay, the seat of that entity. The seat of that supreme entity. So here para means Brahma. Okay. So Brahmanaha sthana. So one is Normal meaning, something which is very, very important. Okay. So the other is supreme ultimate entity that is also referred to as para. In fact, we have even Vishnu Sasana. Ha. Prabhu Tastrika Gubdhama Pavitram Paramam. Ha. Prabhu Tastrika Gubdhama Pavitram Mangalam Param. <laughs> Vishnu Sasana we have. Prabhu Tastrika Guddhame Pavitram Mangalam Param. So Vishnu is described as Para. So any entity is supreme, you describe by the word Para. So Parapadam, the seat of that Buddhim, the locus of that entity. So Ishvara Pratyaksha means where Pratyaksha? Upalabdhisthanam Buddhi. So that is why that is considered as some very very important supreme thing. Buddhim pravishya sthitau gudhau dvau purushau paras paraparau <laughs> Here parapara. So this paraspara is one thing <laughs> and para is another thing. So there para does not mean supreme. Anyaha. Not even anyaha. See, paraha means shatruhu. <laughs> shatruhu may be anyaha. But not Anyaha is Shatru. <laughs> shatru is Anyaha. Not every Anya is Shatru. Understand? So Paraspara Paravu. There the word para means Shatru. Anyway, we'll see. Opposite. Viruddha. Something like that. Okay, now I'll come back to this quickly. We'll complete the Acharya Pasha, then we will move there. Because I saw the word para. This para you should understand very clearly. <clears throat> see here he says. Guhayam buddhau pravishtau parame. 
then he says but here burushakasha samsthana apekshaya paramam why why is it described as paramam why is it described as so important the bah here burusha akasha samsthana apekshaya this is a very interesting phrase bahya purusha means the one who is seen by you physical sharira understand antara purusha is the core of the person is different so bahya purusha is this where you have sharira vachhedena you have the feeling somebody touches why are you touching me i am only touching your finger now you are touching me now you understand <laughs> but if somebody touches see when you are sleeping so two days back i was with my niece she was sleeping so i was trying to wake up before i left morning 4:30 so i touch head i touch nose nothing is no <laughs> so so there is something which is bahya purusha and that bahya purusha unless the antara purusha coordinates with that this bahya purusha doesn't know anything understand so the antara purusha that fellow has to coordinate with this so here he is saying bahya purusha akasha samsthanam means you think of a space which is occupied by this physical structure so that particular space is one space understand so how much space do you need now for sitting depending upon how many kgs you weigh see some people will be 120 it will be difficult for him to sit along with him in the flight you understand so bahya purusha akasha samsthanam so how much space does this man need i will go to repeat this question a very interesting question so ultimately he says 6 by 2 <laughs> how much space does a man need <laughs> okay so anyway so this bahya purusha akasha so what is he saying here this is described as paramakasha this guha sthanam this guhayam buddhau pravishtau this buddhi space it's the space for the buddhi is something which is utkrishta so bahya purusha akasha apekshaya ti paramam because that is the seat which controls everything so any activity in this bahya space happens because it is controlled by that and therefore that space is something which is very important so that is why bhagavad pada interprets parame bahya purusha samsthana apekshaya paramam and then he says parardhe <laughs> this is another interesting issue <laughs> parardhe see brahmana ha see so pradutiye parardhe you will say the sankalpa if some of you have written some sankalpa or heard some sankalpa then we will say see brahmana ha atite so didiye parardhe tadiye ame tadiye muhurte and so on we will keep saying okay so that is called a parardha so parardha means there See, that para is that brahma tasya ardha means half the life gone okay dvitiye parardhe means he is in the second half okay so this is the uh, so long time span you try to recall in your sankalpa there you say the parardha there it means something else we always use purvardha parardha like purva paksha uttara paksha purva mimamsa uttara mimamsa there also you can use the word para okay so purvardhe so parardhe para can also mean west so if you say purva is east para can mean west but that that there is one kind of para but here he is using parardhe so this parardhe the word para has to be carefully understood as brahman here okay and ardha means sthanam not the half so this is a very very special usage this is a, to my knowledge 
this artha is used in vedic literature i was searching and there is another instance which is there <laughs> for the word artha used in the sense of sthanam sthanam means place location so parardhe means parasya sthane so parasya sthane means this ishvara this brahman is understood through this buddhi and therefore that is described as the parasthanam the parasthanam is where <laughs> see parasthanam means so let's say, suppose some people who follow this uh, so in this particular time suppose you have to leave and that time is not auspicious time so then you do one thing you keep and the keep the luggages in the next house you understand so in the good auspicious time you keep there that is called parasthan so you just keep there and then in this time you leave you have already left it there you understand so this is this is also paras para means anyasya para means anyaha paraha means shrestha utkrishtah so paraha means vishnu paraha means brahma so paraha means shatruh there are various meanings we have for para okay so here this parardha means the ultimate supreme being tasya sthanam okay tasya sthanam means upalabdhi sthanam understand sthanam means upalabdhi sthanam so where it is becoming evident to you so that is how you have to understand parardhe so now bhagavad pada's commentary is parardhe parasya brahmanah ardham sthanam parardham and he says harda akasham okay so the space so this buddhi and hridaya so you will always interchangeably use let me give you the instance where the word ardha appears in another context in the place of sthanam so there it is said in the chandogya we have a very interesting story if you are reading no last time this panchangi vidya so in that context see this gotama the father you know father also did not know right so the son comes and shouts at the father i went there to the sabha they asked me questions i did not know to answer even a single question five questions were posed why did you not teach me not? okay <laughs> why did you not teach me this <laughs> see this father said after all i would not be hiding anything to you so yadyaham avedisham kathante navakshyam if i were knowing why would i not share with you i why would i have not shared with you see this is what is the you say see i will tell you this is a very interesting thing see so the fellow comes and says naikan chanaveda so then he says अवेदिष्यम् अवेदिष्यम् so then he says सह गौतम राजोग्य सह गौतम Indeed, that Gautama, Rajya Ardhame Yaya, Rajya Ha. Who is this Raja? Jayvali. This Raja's name is Jayvali. So Jayvali is Ardham. Bhagavad Pada in his commentary says, "See, Sah Gautama, Rajya Ha. Jayvali is Ardham." स्थानम् ये याया गतवान् राज्यः जैवले हे अर्धम् स्थानम् ये याया गतवान् सो दिस इज हाउ इट इज कथं ते तुभ्यम् प्रियाय पुत्राय भगवत् पादा से कथं ते तुभ्यम् प्रियाय पुत्राय समावर्तन काले पुरा नावक्ष्यम् नोक्तवान् अस्मि इत्युक्तवा सह गौतमः गोत्रतः his name is not gotama gotrataha gotama okay 
ಬುದ್ಧಿಮಾಂದ್ಯ ಛಾಯಾತಪಾಲಿ then one of the sophisticated way polished way of saying vilakshana of purusha so vilakshana ha mean see, normal lakshana is not there <laughs> so vigada lakshana ha purusha ha vilakshana ha <laughs> okay so it can be in negative sense it can be in positive sense also so i have seen somebody is karmatha asyum that he is a really highly disciplined person so then these people see, will try to make joke out of adi vilakshana prakriti vilakshana prakriti so this is a phrase which people use so it's okay so that is how vilakshana u here means so these two have completely opposite uh, characteristics see vilakshana u what is the characteristic samsaritva asamsaritvena one is samsari the other is asamsari asamsari means he does not have to undergo the pains of sukha and dukha okay so he is just receiving things as they come okay without getting afflicted by the outcomes so samsaritva asamsaritvena then he says brahma vido vadanti kathayanti so this is how the learned people say brahma vidaha evam vadanti okay na kevalam brahma vidaha vadanti na kevalam na kevalam akarminaha eva vadanti you see samaraya using the word karminaha right kritinaha ah kritinaha so kritinaha is interpreting as karmina okay kriti kritinaha karmina now here see na kevalam akarmina eva vadanti akarmina eva evam na vadanti panchagnaya so the mantra actually is panchagnayo ye chatrina chiketa chaya tapo brahma vido vadanti ಪಂಚಾಗ್ನಯೋ ಯೇ ಚಿತ್ರಿಚಿಕೇತಾಚಿಕೇತಾಚಿಕೇತಾಚಿಕೇತಾಚಿಕೇತಾಗ್ನಿ ಚಯನ್ 
so one who has performed three times this nachiketa agni so he is described as trinachiketa trikrutvah nachiketa agni chitah yehite this chitah means for performing a ritual you have to assemble certain things so you have to create a certain so that is how it is called chayanam understand chayanam means sort of putting together okay chena chiti kanka chiti there are various kinds of chiti ratha chakra chiti so so many things are called so this uh, he says trikrutva how does one understand the word panchagni panchagni we know only one agni ha <laughs> panchagni vidya but then in the panchagni so there it is different where it not literal fire right so there are ah sri yoshit all of them are described as agni that is a different thing but here we know of three agnis we means those who are acquainted with this agni hotra and so on they know of agni trayam one is called garhapatya agni the other is called dakshina agni the third is called ahavani agni so these are three things which are known but he is referring to something as panchagni and in fact the explanation of that is panchagnaya grihastha agni so panchagnaya ni grihastha how do we connect it nobody has we are all grihasthas see say grihe tishthati ti grihastha but uh, this panchagnaya so is something which has been added here and even those people in andhra in tamil nadu at least in some places in maharashtra also there are a few places where still people keep up that tradition and uh, they have a special room allocated in their houses for doing this ritual and there you will find the three things there will be three altars one is for ahavani agni one is for dakshin agni one is for garhapati agni this will be there is circular semi circular and square so all that will be there but panchagni is something which is not known it i have never seen and uh, only recently so i heard that i did not go for the sabha somebody was demonstrating in sabha it was said so this panchagni but when i looked at the literature what does this word panchagni mean it <laughs> there are two three interpretations which are offered for this so this two three interpretations i think i should not take it up because our time is over so we will do this in the next class so we will read this mantra once more shrutam pibantau sukrutasya loke guham pravishtau parame parartha chhaya tapo brahma vido vadanti panchagnaya ye chatrina chiketa so here he actually this so this panchagnaya and trina chiketa both of them belong to the category of kritina okay and the other group is brahma vida so both of them say both of them what do they say ritam divantau sukrutasya loke and these two fellows have completely different characteristics See, one is just a sakshi the other is a fellow who is experiencing okay? so karma phala so this is how the first mantra goes so we will uh, take it up in greater detail with the ramraya's commentary in the next class om sahana bhavatu sahano bhunaktu sah bijan karava vahi tejasvina vadhi tamastu mavishesha vahi ओम शांति 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 सर्वे सुखिन सन्त सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मा कस्य दुख भवे